Welcome into the KSO Show. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. And yesterday, we got to showcase our Big 12 preseason ballot, who we voted for at number one and all the way down. D.Y. was on with us to kind of explain himself and showcase what we had going on there. And uh, there's a look again. If you missed it yesterday, you can go watch the full video and kind of get some of the, the breakdown and insight as to why we did what we did, and uh, there was a consensus that K-State, Utah, and Oklahoma State are going to be good teams this year. Uh, KU in that mix as well, and D.Y. kind of zagged on UCF. He was really the only one that that dropped them down a considerable amount. Today, we'll get to kind of showcase why we made some of those decisions because we're going to show who we voted for on our All-Big 12 preseason team at least on the off season, off, uh, offensive side of the ball. We'll talk a little bit about uh, our defensive selections, but at the end of the day, most of you probably aren't like, who's this nose tackle and who's this random linebacker that's going to play well. But offensively, a lot to kind of break down, a lot to see, uh, especially in a league where it's going to be really up in the air this year uh, on certain awards. Quarterback is obviously going to be hotly contested, Running back, Ollie Gordon's probably a shoe in for one of the spots, but there's probably six or seven other backs in this league that you probably wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the season they are on the first team because two running backs will be on the first team. And then everything else that goes on from there uh, will be pretty interesting to follow along with. So, uh, without anything else to uh, dive into, here is a look at our all Big 12 offensive picks in the preseason poll that went out you'll notice dy just refusing to name a fullback that is an actual quote from him in terms of how he decided to uh put together his roster right there uh drew and i we went the route of knowing that chris Kleiman likes to really pad his stats with his guys and garrett oakley by the end of the season i think we'll get that all conference fullback spot it basically always goes to a k-state player and the way K-State is going to use uh, their tight end most of the time, at least their number one tight end who they want to get the ball to, he ends up in a, a role where you can somewhat justify calling him a fullback. Uh, Ollie Gordon was consensus for all of us, a handful of offensive linemen that are across the board for everybody, and then a handful of guys that make uh, appearances on at least two lists. So there is – a general consensus for a lot of the things that are going to go on in the Big 12 this year. Most notably is probably, though, we need to start at quarterback because Drew and I have been alluding to this, that we were going to probably go the Avery Johnson route. D.Y. did not. He went with Noah Fafita. And uh, I guess I'll let you – you can either be critical of D.Y. choosing Fafita or you can talk up yourself and why you picked Avery Johnson. Uh, D.Y. apparently just a hater of Avery Johnson and, and K-State. Even though he did pick K-State to win it, he's been kind of... He kind of flip-flopped on that one. That was a little... That was... All all offseason, he's been like, oh, it's, it's really tough. Young, new pieces, all this. And it's, it, it finally caught up to him. He's like, you know what? This team is going to probably be pretty good. But uh, I went with Avery Johnson. I just think that he probably has the highest upside. And in a weird way... I think that he probably has the fewest question marks among the top quarterbacks. I, I just don't think Colorado will be good enough to justify having Shadur Sanders as uh, the big all Big 12 quarterback. I don't know how healthy Jalen Daniels will ever be, even day to day. Cam Rising hasn't played in over a year. No Fafita has a brand new coaching staff. And then that, that just kind of leaves Avery Johnson as a new offensive coordinator. but. He also made one start at quarterback, and it was with the offensive coordinator he has. So I think that with that, you kind of see that he probably has the highest ceiling of all of them. And I, I feel like when you pick a team to be number one, you probably think their quarterback is going to be pretty freaking good. So I think that having Avery Johnson as a quarterback kind of coincides with having K-State as the number one team that we would have picked. Well, and that's that's a good point because – I don't know that the first team quarterback is going to come from a team that finishes fifth or sixth in the league like we tend to have right here. I mean, D.Y. himself even thinks Arizona is going to finish fifth. And I think for K-State, 
you or Utah to be up there, I think that you're probably looking at Avery Johnson or Cam Rising getting that award. Uh, also, I want to bring this up, and we might we might want to talk about this or uh, content steal in the future. But did you happen to see uh, incoming conference media member uh, who who runs the uh, Arizona twenty four seven site, Jason Shear, what he tweeted about Big Twelve quarterbacks yesterday? Yeah, he he posted something about how he thinks that, like every quarterback in the league has a question mark. Uh, no, he he. So he has. Let's see. He has eight quarterbacks, no questions at all. Know what you're getting, not necessary quality. Uh, some questions, injury slash experience, and then who knows as question marks. Uh, he had two quarterbacks there. You want me to read you who his who his no questions at all list is? Uh, I'm going to take a stab and okay. say that one of the no questions is uh, ooh. Is one of the no questions Alan Bowman? Yes, one of the no questions is Alan Bowman, who uh, if you've watched any Big 12 football over the last like six years, you would have a lot of questions about Alan Bowman, even despite what happened uh, last season at Oklahoma State. So yes, uh, no, Alan Bowman is on that list. I have a no questions, but it's a no questions because he's bad, is one of the other no questions, Jeff Sims. Uh, no, because uh, Jeff Sims that was not even just tabbed as a starter for Arizona State. That would be Sam Levitt, who's in the who knows category. So oh, the two who Lord. knowses are Sam Levitt and Jerry Bohannon. Oh, well, I think that Jerry Bohannon is another, you know what you're going to get, <laughs> and you know that's probably going to be bad. I was so going to say, I kind of feel like we know a Jerry Bohannon since he was on a team that won the Big 12 and they told him to kick rocks from Baylor. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other no Rocco, questions at all. Noah Fafita. Rocco, Rocco Becht probably on there. Rocco Becht is on there. Keep in mind, Noah Fafita and Rocco Becht were freshmen last year. Now, Rocco Becht was a redshirt freshman, so he'd been in the program two years. But And Rocco Becht is also keeping the same offensive coordinator and the same head coach from last season. Noah Fafita is not. Noah Fafita is losing all those things from last no, year. I, I would say new offensive coordinator, too. Oh, that's right. That's right. So yeah, that's yeah. They've changed now back to back. I'm not uh, sure how you can say that both of those guys are no questions asked when uh, you're changing coordinator. At least I would be a little like the Rocco Beck one. I'd be a little bit more okay with being on there because I I do think Rocco Beck's pretty good. But Fafita, I mean, I don't know that you can say no questions at all to a guy that you know kind of came in midway through last season and was really good. But like you just don't know and. It's a total overhaul of what's going on at Arizona. And then Shadur Sanders is on there. Uh, my question, my, yeah, talent-wise, maybe. My question on Shadur would be uh, what's around him. K.J. Yeah. Jefferson, which I don't know. I mean, I, I guess if if you think that you know what you're getting with K.J. Jefferson and it's a you know pretty a slightly above average player, okay. Uh, and then Donovan Smith and Josh Hoover were on there. Um, obviously Smith and Hoover, those are negative, know what you're getting, but that even seems slightly unfair to Josh Hoover, who was also a freshman quarterback last year and was just kind of like thrown to the wolves. So that's interesting. The some questions category, Cam Rising, Jalen Daniels, Avery Johnson, Baron Morton, Brendan Soresby, and Daquan Finn. Uh, obviously in the cases of Rising, Daniels, and Morton, that's an injury concern type thing which i guess is fair but i don't know i mean that all things fair in a healthy season if you're putting some other guys in the no yeah. questions asked category rising and daniels sh should at least be in the no questions department yeah that's i that's kind of where i i go to and yeah i guess you can say hey we haven't seen avery johnson as a full-time starter but i did see avery johnson play essentially two full games last year at different points in the season, one in October and one in at the end of December. And he looked pretty darn good in both of those games. With and, two different offensive coordinators. Yes. And also missing your best receiving target in that second game because Ben Sennett was gone. Really, you could argue that, you know, one of your other top receiving targets is Phillip Brooks did not play in that game. And... I just think like if you 
I think people are not being truthful on the Avery Johnson thing. I think, I mean, I don't want to be like saying, hey, just unhitch the the freight train of excitement, but like the way he played last year and what we know his talent level is and that he's already shown to me feels like something where I don't have many questions about Avery Johnson going into this coming season. I had more questions about Will Howard going into his senior season after winning the Big 12 than I do of Avery Johnson going into his sophomore uh, season. So that one's an interesting one to me. I don't know. Brennan Soresby, uh, maybe it's a question mark because we don't know anything about a guy that played quarterback at Indiana. Um, I don't know. I'm just assuming he's going to be pretty bad. He's at Cincinnati. And then Daquan Finn is like a legit question mark. Like we don't know what that's going to look like. And we'll get into talking about him in a little bit because uh, he plays into our list a little bit later on. So just thought that was fascinating. And uh, we'll have to kind of dive into that a little bit uh, later down the road and and give some deeper consideration to it. But let's get back to our all Big 12 list. The running backs, we mentioned Ollie Gordon. Clean sweep across the board. D1 and I both put Devin Neal on there. You put Taj Brooks. I don't think any of those are wrong answers. Obviously, we know Ollie Gordon is a Heisman level candidate uh, in the way that he can play football. Devin Neal, Taj Brooks in the same category as also guys like RJ Harvey and DJ Giddens. And uh, I mean, I'm trying to think who else around the league because there's just so many guys at running back in this league that are talented that could be on this list and deserving. But um, I certainly think that the three li- the three names that we've put on our list uh, are probably the most proven guys and dudes that they just find a way to make plays. Yeah, and like I said last week, like Taj Brooks, I think has been one of the more underrated and kind of underappreciated Big Twelve running backs in recent memory. Like he's extremely, extremely solid, and, and now with how their offense is going. He's starting to get a little bit more carries and more involved. And it it was big for Texas Tech, and that's one of the reasons that I think that if there was going to be another team besides UCF that really overachieves, it'd be Texas Tech because of Taj Brooks, Baron Morton. And I think that one year it's all got to come together for Texas Tech at quarterback where they can keep their guy upright. So I think that they're kind of one of those sneaky teams. Yeah, that's that's one where you're not going to be hurt at quarterback every single year, right? Like that's just that's not possible. It's you're gonna make you're gonna get something right eventually. Yeah, you you would hope not, but it seems like every year it's kind of been on their train. We're not gonna talk about fullback. I don't imagine this is giving my uh, personal campaign to say to the Big Twelve and or sorry the All State Twelve as it may be called <laughs> soon. Uh, let's get rid of the fullback spot for the preseason team and add a third running back or like yeah. another receiver. An all-purpose like, player, maybe. Yeah, like what are we doing here? It's it's 2024. That we don't. It's not 1985. We don't need a fullback spot. Yeah, the full the fullback spot is a little dumb, and I think kind of highlighted by the way that people vote on it. It's just it's a it's a little bit of cheating that goes on there by putting essentially another tight end. Uh, so yeah, I think at, at an all purpose spot, uh, another tight end or another running back, uh, that probably makes the most sense. And this would be the perfect year to have a third running back spot. Like, yeah, some of us, there are going to be two guys that get left out of the preseason, all big 12 list that probably would make it every other year. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, all right, we'll move on then. Cause Drew does not want to talk about, uh, the fullbacks, which is good because D Y didn't want to either. He didn't even want to just vote for one. That's uh, he said no. Uh, tight end, three different tight ends on the list here. Uh, I went with Brent Kyth from Utah. He, this is one that there's a health question there, but if he's healthy, he's probably going to be uh, the best uh, tight end in the league. I, how did you come to decide Drake Dabney? Because obviously, we know uh, over the last two seasons, TCU had gotten really good tight end play. Is that just kind of a a system thing that you think TCU sets up well for the tight end? Yeah, for me, it's kind of like a, a system thing. And I, this was probably one that I did. This and offensive line, I probably did the most research on, <laughs> and like to, to be honest, because this is one of the harder spots to come up with somebody. Because last year, there was two obvious candidates with Javion Sanders and Ben Sennett. And that's where I was thankful for the fullback spot because you could kind of put them both. Mm-hmm. But now, now there's just less proven guys. 
And Drake Dabney was an honorable mention, all Big 12 last year at tight end and 552 yards uh, at Baylor. So it's kind of just like, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Like, it was more just banking on TCU having a good tight end play. And I already had Garrett Oakley at fullback. Like, tight end is another good spot. Like, if you just want to be a homer and pick your guy, like, tight end, great spot to do it. Yeah, tight end, fullback. Uh, one of the offensive lineman spots is always a good one, or like a DB. Uh, yeah, there, and that's certainly out there. And these ones where you get a little bit unknown, punter sometimes. Oh, like, you, yeah. if you go and look at people's all Big 12 lists, because uh, I, I happen to get to catch a glimpse of uh, somebody that works for I that covers Iowa State, uh, what his list looks like. And yeah, and I looked at up and down the list and I was like, hmm, that's a lot of cyclones. Uh, but I, I said, I can't really argue with any of them because some are deserving and then others like you just don't know. So it makes sense. Kick return, punt return. Like that's one of those where you go, well, you know, I, I like what we have there. So maybe we'll see what what comes about it. Uh, wide receiver. Really pretty consensus across the board. I was the only one that uh, did things a little bit differently. Uh, cause I, I threw an addition to McMillan from Arizona, who was a consensus. He's probably going to be the best wide receiver in the big 12 this coming season. I put Lawrence Arnold and Josh Kelly, uh, Kelly's a transfer from Washington state, but he was a guy that got all pac 12 votes last year. And I think if everything goes right in Lubbock and like you're talking about the health thing, I could see that being a really explosive thing. He's, I think he's a little bit higher too on, in terms of once he's draft eligible, like his expectations there. And my logic on Lawrence Arnold is, I mean, the KU's got receivers that make plays, and he was just, he's just the best of the KU receivers that I think production-wise you would look around and say somebody in that receiver room could very well be worthy. And, you know, the closer that they are to us, the more familiar we are with them. Like you talk about going through and looking it up, like the offensive line and defensive line stuff and, and linebacker to some extent, especially with all these new teams, like it takes a lot of research, at least with some of these, you can go, okay, I've actually seen Lawrence Arnold play a lot of football. Like I know what he can do there. So uh, I put, I put some faith into that. And I, I, those are the three that I chose, but uh, D Y the only deviation he had from you was that he put Brennan Presley on there from Oklahoma state who also just incredibly worthy of that honor, uh, but explain how dare you put an Iowa State Cyclone at a skill possession on your list. Uh, so Kobe Hudson, I put just because he's super explosive. Uh, Jalen Noel, kind of like the, you with Lawrence Arnold, like he was the guy that like I just know about him know, and have known about him for a long time. I think that he's probably worthy of getting a mention because he's been so good in this league for so long. We're at, like, I know that I just said get rid of the fullback stuff, but we're at the point now with 16 teams. You could make an argument for just about any position to add more spots because with 16 teams, there's just so many worthy players that somebody is going to get left out and end up getting like getting really upset. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I know that uh, there was a, a, some thought maybe uh, on my part to put kobe hudson on there but that's one of those where we talk about question marks i'm just i'm not a big kj jefferson guy so uh, i'll be interested to see how that goes and so much of what goes on with uh ucf this year is probably going to start more so with their two running backs uh with harvey and boone back there so we'll see uh, how it ends up working out but certainly uh all deserving candidates on there now the offensive line, uh, Luke Kandra is a consensus really throughout the country uh, in terms of offensive line play at Cincinnati. Wyatt Millam in that same category, uh, as well as Jonas Savanea, uh from Arizona. And then Dalton Cooper appears twice, and I went with Jalen Travis from Iowa State. So a lot of notable agreements is there, and Easton Kilty gets the nod from D.Y. and I. I can explain the logic on that one, and it's just – Number one, can you imagine an all Big 12 team without a K State offensive lineman? And when it comes down to looking around past those top three guys in the league, you start to go, okay, uh, who, where's the talent coming from in the league? Well, Easton Kilty was one of the best offensive line additions in the transfer portal, and he's going to come in. He's probably going to anchor a really good spot. And it helps when you're, you play an important spot on the offensive line that you've got 
a really talented quarterback and a really talented running back. And Easton Kilty has that. Uh, so I expect him to come in and be a, a stud for K state. So uh, I, I would imagine that was DY's logic too. And that's how Easton Kilty ends up on our list. I, that's one at the end of the day, I don't expect him to make the official list that comes out from the big 12 next month when all the votes are pooled together, because I'm not sure enough people are going to know about Easton Kilty. Uh, but that's one that I think by the end of the year, uh, he very well could be on that team. Yeah, Easton Kilty was probably my sixth offensive lineman. Like I said, like doing the research for the offensive line especially was brutal because I don't know if anybody like realizes this, but there was only one offensive lineman that yeah. was on the, the All Big 12 first or second team last year that is returning. So trying to kind of do the research on that ended up leading me to finding like guys from Arizona that were on the all pack 12 team that came back. Yep. I was like, Oh, cool. That works. So I, I wonder if that's kind of be like something that ends up happening or you're going to see probably a lot of guys that cover or girls that cover their schools that are there just putting their own offensive linemen, because that, again, that's a spot where you have five spots. Why not put somebody from your own team? I didn't do that because I am apparently a hater. A hater or just a you know a man of principle. Uh, you said I've already got a couple of cats on there, so I don't need any more. Uh, the kicker spot, you and DUI both went with Michael Hayes from West Virginia. I took Tyler Loop from Arizona. Uh, Loop had a good season in the Pac-12 last year. He got honors there at that position. And I just – Arizona, better team. I'm going to put their kicker over uh, what West Virginia's – trotting out West, there. West Virginia worst team so that we're going to be kicking a lot more fuel goals good point very good point but maybe Arizona is going to be a good team because they can bang field goals from <laughs> 55 yards and benefit them I don't know we'll see uh then the kick returner and punt returner spot we were all in agreement we all went with Dylan Edwards that seems like a pretty obvious decision because he's going to get the opportunity it's K-State. That's the other thing. You know, offensive line, can you imagine a K-State player not at fullback or offensive line on this list? Uh, same type of deal. And Edwards feels like the guy that can rejuvenate that return game for K-State. He's going to get the opportunities, and he's certainly got the ability because, I mean, at the end of the day, when you think about who's going to be returning kicks in the league, there aren't going to be very many guys that have overall talent better than Dylan Edwards. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what ends up happening at that kick return or punt return spot because I'm not sure if a lot of people kind of know that that's where case it's going to be placing him as well. Uh, which kind of leads me to, I think, that like Dre McRae from Texas Tech might end up being who gets the nod because he returned kicks last year. So I wonder if it's going to be kind of like one of those where you knew that Philip Brooks was back, so you could pencil him in. So I wonder, because McCray kicked or did kick and punt return last year for Texas Tech, if people just write him in. Yeah, I, it's it'll be interesting to see where this one goes. That's another one that, especially because statistically, it's so much harder to get an idea of, and like there's so much that goes on to it. Like that's just one that it, it's going to be tough for a lot of people to uh, maybe figure out and decide. Uh, which way that they they end up wanting to go there. Okay, so that is the offense and everything else. Uh, a couple of notes uh, defensively that I, I guess are worth mentioning and kind of uh, giving to, to what I did. Uh, I only had one K-State player on my defensive side. It That was a really tough one to, to decide. I, I gave it to Jordan Riley. I considered like Jacob Parrish or, you know, maybe Marquis Siegel, but I went with Jordan Riley. I think that there's going to be an opportunity there. There seems to be some some significant buzz, uh, and I think a lot of people outside of of the K State world like that addition for K State. So I went with Jordan Riley, and then the rest of my DBs are are familiar names for people: Jeremiah Cooper at Iowa State, Kobe Bryant at KU, Travis Hunter uh, at Colorado, and then Takario Davis from Arizona was one of the the different newcomers that I put into the list. The linebackers, this is a, an interesting one. I have it dominated by Oklahoma State, both Nick Martin. Uh, Nick Martin made that list in there. Um, I, I think Oklahoma State, like this is really the anchor of what they're going to be doing uh, moving forward. And I also put Colin Oliver in there. Like if 
you think Ollie Gordon runs the offense and props them up, their linebackers save and prop up the defense. And really that's how it's been for Oklahoma State going back a couple of years now. So those were my significant uh, defensive names. And uh, I also gave BYU's punter the nod uh, for my all-conference punter in the preseason. Uh, so I put two case staters on the defensive side. I kind of went a little bit outside the box because I was trying to think of a case state player that I think could really pop. And this guy kind of popped near the end of the year and was, I think, the best linebacker at the end of the season was Desmond Purnell. So I have uh, Nick Martin, Colin Oliver, and Desmond Purnell. I just think that Purnell finished the season really strong, and I think that he's due for an even bigger season this year. And then, I, like you, I put a defensive back, but we we did different guys, and I, I picked uh, your guy, Marquise Siegel. I just think that with how he plays, if he can learn how to catch the ball this year, he could be near the top of the Big 12 in interceptions. And to think that there is a lot to like about his game. And I think that he's kind of a future NFL guy as well. Uh, my other defensive backs were Travis Hunter uh, from Colorado, Takario Davis from uh, Arizona, uh, Melo Dotson from KU, and Jacob Robinson from BYU. So no, no Kobe Bryant for me. Uh, and then my punter is Mason Fletcher from Cincinnati because I think that they're going to be punting a lot. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea uh, to go. And obviously, that's kind of what I did with BYU. BYU, I also anticipate punting an awful lot this season. Uh, the last thing that we'll get to here is our all Big 12 preseason awards. Uh, UNDY playing it safe at Offensive Player of the Year with Ollie Gordon. Uh, I went with Avery Johnson because at the end of the day, we talked about with the schedule, and I've mentioned it before, but like if if K State is going to be the team that most people are expecting them to be Avery Johnson is going to be the type of quarterback that they need him to be. And with his talent and the way that it projects out, he should be able to win this type of award. I think he'll be the best player at the end of the season in the big 12 in terms of offensive necessity defensively, Travis Hunter swept it. I, that might be one where for the first time ever in these awards, you get the hundreds of people that vote in it to all vote for Travis Hunter. I think you'd be crazy not to put him as your number one. Like we talked about, it's tough for defensive backs to really change the game. But like, if there's one that can do it uh, significantly, it's Travis Hunter. And then newcomer of the year, we were all very different on. Uh, you went with Noah Fafita, which I respect that, you know, they, they aren't going to count it that way, but they should. He is new to the league. He's never played in the big 12 before. So, I, I don't like that the Big 12 is not going to handle it that way, but I respect your decision there. Uh, D.Y. went with Dylan Edwards, and I went with the Daquan Finn from Baylor uh, was my choice, and that's kind of just a wild card because, as we know, Finn could end up not really working out that well being on a really bad Baylor team, but I think that there's also a chance that the team could be bad and Finn could still showcase his talent and be deserving of that award. And uh, In terms of newcomers and how important they are, I think that he would uh, fit the bill. So that's that's why I side with Daquan Finn. Yeah, I, I went with Fafita because I kind of cheated the system. Like, Arizona, new to the league. No, Fafita, new to the league. He should win it. Like, it. <laughs> it's just like if... Totally fair. If, that's how it should be. If, if somebody wrote Cam Rising in, like, I wouldn't bat an eye either. Like, there, yeah. there's two schools who are new to the league. So they <laughs> they should be able to win it. But Daquan Finn was probably the guy that I had second on my list. Uh, offensive player of the year, I also had Avery Johnson as probably second. Uh, defensive player, I didn't really even think of a second person. But just off the top of my head, it would probably be Nick Martin or Colin Oliver. I, I just think of those who are studs for Oklahoma State. And like like you said, a defensive back, it's kind of hard for a linebacker to change the game and change how everything goes. But Oklahoma State's defense is really ran by both their linebackers. Yeah, they and they they will shut you down. They will make sure to to not let much get past them. So that is uh, our Big Twelve preseason All Conference list. Uh, again, we're a little less than a month away from getting to know how everybody voted and what the outcome ends up being. Uh, but that's how the KSO crew is voting. So we'll get out of here. That'll do it for us today. We'll be back again tomorrow talking a little K-State recruiting. And if you haven't already, 
Go check out the KSO YouTube page and uh, get the latest on K-State's newest commit, Dalton Knapp. Drew and I have a breakdown there for you as well. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching and listening to K-State Online. Back again tomorrow talking K-State recruiting.